Good morning and welcome everyone. In the next few minutes, I'm going to present my 12 months progress. My name is Dorina Boyzat and I'm working at Heimpal National Pediatric Institute. My vision is good timing and good methods of surgery elevate the quality of life of children with inflammatory bowel disease. To reach this goal, I would like to assess the current situation of surgical interventions and improve the quality by communicating the results. Intestinal resections are still unavoidable in 43% of patients with inflammatory bowel disease. Therefore, we started, this two important, started to investigate this, these two important questions in our topic. In the first project, we analyzed the association between preoperative anti-TNF alpha therapy and postoperative complications in pediatric IBD after intestinal resections. Over the past decade, biologic agents have revolutionized uh, the treatment of uh, pediatric inflammatory bowel disease. Nowadays, anti-TNF is the first-line therapy in moderate to severe IBD. However, it increases the risk of infections. Therefore, the use of biologics before surgery is controversial. The most recent meta-analysis in the adult population didn't find any differences between the complications in the group of patients who were treated with infliximab or not. In spite of this, the pediatric surgical guideline still recommend stopping anti-TNF prior to abdominal surgery. So our aim is to assess the safety of preoperative anti-TNF alpha therapy within the washout period in pediatric IBD. We formulated the research question. Is it safe to operate the patient received anti-TNF alpha within 12 weeks or wait for the washout? The population is children with IBD after intestinal resection, and we compared those patients who were treated with preoperative anti-TNF alpha therapy with those who didn't get this therapy before. The outcome is the postoperative complications. This was our final search key, and with this search key, we found almost 5,000 publications. After the full text selection, eight records were eligible for qualitative and quantitative synthesis. We divided the adverse events into two main groups, infectious and non-infectious complications. Moreover, we investigated surgical site infections because anti-TNF increases the risk of infections. Uh, this slide shows the results of overall complication. As you can see, the overall ratio is higher than one, which means a non-significantly higher risk for postoperative complications in patients who were treated with preoperative anti-TNF. Moreover, the odds ratio of the first two articles is lower than one. However, the odds ratio of Sharp et al. is higher than four. Actually, Sharp et al. defined the intervention a little different than the first two articles. This is the reason behind the differences. My second forest plot shows the result about the infectious complications. As you can see, here we divided the population into two subgroups. The first subgroup uh, includes patients with Crohn's disease, while the second subgroup consists of patients with ulcerative colitis. The overall ratio is lower than one, which means the opposite, so patients with preoperative anti-TNF have a non-significantly lower chance for postoperative infectious complications. This slide shows the results uh, of uh, surgical site infections, and here we also made two subgroups, patients with Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis. The overall ratio is 0.63, which means the same patients with preoperative treatment have a non-significantly lower chance for postoperative surgical site infections. A total of 185 patients were pulled from three articles together to assess the risk of postoperative non-infectious complications. Here we also have two subgroups, and the odds ratio is also lower than one, which means the same as in the last uh, forest plot. Last but not least, we also investigated readmission. Here we have three articles. Uh, the first two characterized with pat patients with Crohn's disease, while the third one characterized patients with ulcerative colitis, and the odds ratio is 0 0.59. Uh, of course, our meta-analyses have several strengths and also limitations. This is a gap-filling meta-analysis about the association of preoperative anti-TNF alpha therapy and postoperative complications in pediatric IBD. The definition of outcomes are completely the same in all articles, and we have a wide range of outcomes. 
On the other hand, we have just a, a few number of observational studies with a low number of cases, and the several co-founding factors were not reported precisely. In conclusion, our results didn't reveal any association between preoperative anti-TNF alpha therapy and postoperative complications in pediatric IBD. Based on our data, there is no need to delay the operation because of anti-TNF. However, randomized controlled trials with a higher number of cases should be performed with more detailed data about baseline characteristics. Furthermore, precise information about the last dose and trough level of anti-TNF could be also really helpful. It is still a question, which is the optimal timing of the last administration of the drug? Here you can see our progress. We submitted our manuscript and got back uh, for, for revision. In the next part of my presentation, let me introduce my second project, which title is Intestinal Resections in Pediatric Crohn's Disease, a nationwide survey based on the Hungarian Pediatric IBD Registry. According to publications, 5 to 7 uh, percentage of children with Crohn's disease undergo intestinal resection within one year after diagnosis. A significant, a significant proportion of this group requires surgery at diagnosis. Is it happen because of diagnostic delay? Our aim is to identify prognostic factors which associated early intestinal resections in pediatric Crohn's disease. HUPIR is the Hungarian Pediatric IBD Registry, which was launched in 2010. It is an existing prospective and nationwide registry with 27 centers. Our clinical question is, what are the prognostic factors for early surgery in pediatric Crohn's disease? The population is children with Crohn's disease. The exposure is intestinal resection within six months after diagnosis, and the comparison is uh, the opposite. The outcome is the prognostic factors for early surgery. We will include children under the age of 18 who were diagnosed with Crohn's disease, and we will exclude those who were diagnosed with ulcerative colitis or unclassified IBD, and those who undergo perianal surgery or percutane drainage without any intestinal resection. In this slide, you can see the investigated prognostic factors like anthropometric data, symptoms, laboratory tests, the presence of granuloma, extraintestinal manifestation, the diagnostic delay, disease location, and activity index. I bring a slide about our preliminary descriptive data. And here you can see that the mean age, the female gender, the pediatric uh, Crohn's disease activity index, and uh, abdominal pain without uh, diarrhea uh, are more common in patients uh, with early intestinal resection. This is the progress of our second project. Currently, the statisticians are working on our final results. However, I have already started to writing the methods part of the manuscript. Our aim is to submit the second project until the end of October. Thank you for your attention. And my favorite quote is, never measure the height of a mountain until you have reached the top. Then you will see how low it was. Thank you so much. My question, whether the duration of the previous TNF uh, alpha therapy influence um, the result in the special cases. So, for instance, it uh, kept for a longer period, maybe the side effects and, uh, and um, uh, frequency of infection uh, could have been more frequent. But maybe for this uh, subgroup analysis, it would be necessary. Yes, thank you for your question. Uh, it is a very good question. and. Um, uh, when we started uh, to analyze this uh, topic and this question, uh, we, wanted to, and, uh, we wanted to make a subgroup analysis uh, due to uh, the time period, but uh, we didn't have enough uh, data and enough article for this. Uh, that was the reason why we started to investigate um, the time period within 12 weeks. Uh, after, um, within 12 weeks. Um, but uh, we hope in the future we can analyze, uh, a sub we can make a subgroup analysis too. I observed, maybe not correctly, but uh, when you uh, perform subgroup analysis uh, regarding uh, the area that are um, 
So regarding it, if it's uh, Crohn disease or uh, ulcerative colitis, so I observed that uh, in some of the cases the results were better uh, in the ulcerative colitis uh, group. Uh, is it true or just? So, yeah, if yes, you... Maybe this is the best for us plot. Yes, uh, yes, yes. yes. Question. Could you explain it or do you have an idea what, what is the reason behind it? Uh, yes, uh, it can, there can be a lot of reason behind this. For example, uh, it is really important, was it the urgency of uh, the disease? Was it uh, an urgent uh, surgery or an, or an elective one? And uh, unfortunately, we have, uh, haven't got enough data to answer this question because, uh, because of the poor uh, quality, or not poor, poor quality, but um, we haven't enough data about the baseline characteristics and co-founding factors. Um, so that's the reason why I uh, couldn't uh, give uh, a perfect answer for this question. But yes, we can see that uh, patient, patients with ulcerative colitis may have a better results uh, with preoperative anti-TNF. However, in the other uh, forest plots, we have just one uh, article about patients with ulcerative colitis. I would like to congratulate you for your prize and also for <laughs> your uh, presentation. Uh, my question is regarding to your second project and I would like to ask that why did you choose six months as a cutoff? Yes, um, actually in uh, the uh, previous pub publications uh, there are some articles uh, where they uh, investigated uh, one year uh, after diagnosis, the prognostic factors, um, and uh, we saw that uh, uh, we wanted to investigate the baseline characteristics. And uh, baseline characteristics are uh, not yet influenced when we uh, analyzed, uh, when we used the time frame uh, within six months after diagnosis. Um, for example, uh, the introduction therapy uh, can influence um, the baseline characteristics, but it takes time uh, to reach uh, uh, the required level, so that was the reason behind this uh, decision. I would like to also congratulate you and Thanks. ask if you tried to get individual data for the subgroup analysis you mentioned, or are you planning to? Um, yes, um, actually as I um, said, we have just uh, eight um, eligible articles and uh, that was the reason why we uh, couldn't make uh, another subgroup analysis. And uh, uh, yes, we saw that uh, we will investigate this uh, question in our um, population. Um, we were thinking about this and it's under discussion um, today.